This is the Pick Your Poison podcast. I'm your host, Dr. JP, and I'm here to share my passion for poisons in this interactive show. Will our patients survive this podcast? It's up to you and the choices you make. Our episode today is called The Hollywood Shaman. Want to know why people are intentionally poisoning themselves with frog poison? What happens when you take it? And what could possibly go wrong? Then stay tuned. Today's topic is a little lighter than our last few. And it starts with a phone call from a friend. Olivia is going through a hard time. Last year, her 18-year-old son tragically died in a fentanyl overdose. The stress led to a divorce from her husband, and she's lost her job. Quite frankly, she's barely hanging on. On the phone, she's distraught about her soon-to-be ex-husband's latest legal maneuvers. After venting, she asks you to go to a combo ceremony. Another friend backed out at the last minute, and she doesn't want to go alone. Combo, you search your brain, having vaguely heard of it. It's frog poison from the Amazon. You say no. She says the shaman is a famous Hollywood practitioner in town for a few days. You say definitely no and tell her there's no medical data to support the many claims made online. You explain the potential risks. She hangs up crying and you doubt she listened to a word you said. Olivia is obviously having a mental health crisis despite having seen multiple psychologists and psychiatrists and despite trying multiple antidepressants and other psych meds. After a few minutes thought, you change your mind. If she can't be deterred, it's safer if you go with her, regardless of your opinion of the circumstances. You grab a bottle of nausea medicine on your way out the door. You meet her at the location in an affluent suburban neighborhood. Combo is used by indigenous people in the Amazon to cleanse and energize hunters as well as for healing. It's also called hunting magic. This setting in suburbia is about as far as you can get from the jungle. A man with a man bun opens the door, introducing himself as Shaman Dave. He has small circular scars on his shoulders, aligned in vertical rows. Shaman Dave ushers you into a room smelling of incense with soft music playing in the background. A certificate propped against the wall says he's a certified combo practitioner by the International Rainforest Chakra Society. On the floor are two yoga mats. On each mat is a bucket and a liter bottle of water. Olivia looks nervous. You whisper it's not too late to leave. She says she needs to purge her evil humors to give herself a fresh start. She's undeterred. The shaman invites her to sit on the floor. You do the same. He starts chanting, then puts a pipe in her nostril and blows smoke up her nose. You try not to recoil. She might be purging evil humors, but she's definitely acquired some new germs. Probably rape, a snuff mixture. He then uses an eyedropper to put something in her eyes. She winces and blinks. The eye drops are usually made from a plant, also from the Amazon, used by hunters to improve their vision and used by indigenous tribes to treat visual problems. The shaman asks if you're certain you don't want to participate. You are. After more chanting, which at least seems to calm Olivia, he opens the combo. The frog secretions are dried on a flat stick, like a paint stirrer. First, he burns Olivia's skin with what looks like an incense stick round burns in three vertical lines on her arm, similar to the scars on his own arm. Ten spots in total. He then tells her to spit onto the dried frog secretion, mixes it into a paste with her saliva, and dabs it into the burns. You ask him if she should get so many spots. He says they'd spoken at length about the imbalance in her chakras yesterday. He says Olivia needs a large dose because she has a lot to purge. You haven't seen a combo ceremony before, but you did some quick research on the way here. Olivia does have a lot going on, but beginners start with a few spots, like three, not ten. You protest, Olivia nods yes to Shaman Dave, and he ignores you, applying paste to all ten burns. You check your watch. The paste isn't supposed to stay on for long, typically just a few minutes before it's wiped off. Frog secretions aren't monitored by the FDA, and it's anyone's guess how much active ingredient is in the reconstituted paste mixed with her spit. Question number one, what type of compounds are in combo? A, hallucinogenic. B, cardioactive steroids like digoxin, a heart medicine. C, paralytic toxins. D, mixed peptides. The answer is D, mixed peptides. Unlike many alternative drugs from the Amazon, combo isn't a hallucinogen, it's a purgative. Olivia says she feels dizzy and her heart is racing. The shaman says the combo is beginning to work. Her lips swell up 
than her face. You reach for your phone because your first instinct is to call 911. This looks like angioedema, life-threatening allergic reaction. You stop yourself. The shaman nods sagely. Frog face, he says. You sit on your hands instead of digging in your bag to see if you might have a spare EpiPen. It's a transient reaction caused by the combo. And unlike a real allergic reaction, it doesn't result in airway swelling and shouldn't last for long. Olivia turns pale and sweaty like she might pass out, and she begins vomiting, copiously retching and gagging. The loud, painful sounds are normally associated with a bowel obstruction or cannabis hyperemesis, at least in your experience. She vomits and vomits and vomits, then runs to the bathroom. Now diarrhea, and she still hasn't stopped vomiting. What exactly is going on here, and why would anyone do this voluntarily? Combo is the name for the giant frog monkey. The frog, Phylomedusa bicolor, secretes the poison from its skin when stressed or threatened as a defense mechanism to deter predators. Its use by indigenous people in the Amazon was first reported in 1925 by a French priest. Since then, it's become popular around the world, purportedly treating a wide variety of ailments, including addiction, anxiety, depression, diabetes, HIV AIDS, infections, vascular and joint diseases, just to name a few. There's no medical evidence to support any of these claims. Believers say the purging leads to an afterglow that lasts for days to weeks. They report increased mental clarity and fortitude. Some believe it increases their physical strength and sexual stamina. Shaman Dave wipes the frog paste off Olivia's skin. She moans, my chest hurts, then runs back into the bathroom. He's turned up the music, presumably to drown out the sound of her retching. No one ever promised an easy path to enlightenment, but who knew it was paved with intractable vomiting? The purging is supposed to last about 20 or 30 minutes and then stop. Users describe it as being wrung out from the inside or like being punched in the head. Olivia should feel better in a few minutes. Combo is harvested from the frogs after they're caught in the wild. Each leg is tied to a stick, and sometimes they're placed near a fire. Once stressed, the frog begins to secrete the poison from its skin. The secretions are scraped off and dried on sticks, and the frogs are released alive, but I have to say, it doesn't look like a pleasant experience for them at all. The secretions contain over a hundred different peptides with different properties. Some cause low blood pressure, others a high heart rate, flushing, and some activate opioid receptors. Pharmaceutical companies have patented many of the peptides for potential therapeutic use, though no medicines have been developed thus far. It's been almost an hour and Olivia is still vomiting. You get out the nausea medicine you brought and tell her to put one under her tongue. The shaman tries to wave you away, saying she must purge in order to heal. She's clutching her chest. You ignore him. The entire room smells like vomit, overpowering the incense. Her facial swelling is mostly resolved, and she isn't as flushed, but she's sweating profusely and moaning with every wretch. Something doesn't seem right here. Even the shaman is beginning to sweat, though he's pretending to be calm. Enough is enough. You tell him to help get her into the car, and you drive her to the ER. As physicians, of course, we try to avoid caring for friends or family members to avoid conflicts of interest or clouded thinking. But this is a fictional case, so you're in charge of your friend's care. The nurse hooks her up to the monitor, noting her vital signs. Her heart rate is 120 beats per minute, fast. Her blood pressure is 100 over 60. It's on the low side, but it's okay. Her respiratory rate is fast at 30 breaths per minute, though her oxygen saturation is good. You order an IV, fluids, and nausea medicine. Question number two, true or false? There's an antidote to frog poison. A, true, B, false. The answer, B, false. There's no antidote for this. The treatment is supportive care, basically the IV fluids and nausea medicine you've already prescribed, and managing the complications if any arise. Most likely, Shaman Dave gave her too high a dose, and it just needs more time to wear off. You order some basic labs, because combo can cause electrolyte disturbances and kidney failure. More on that in a minute. After two doses of nausea medicine, Olivia finally stops vomiting, and you breathe a sigh of relief. However, she says her chest pain is getting worse. It's already 10 out of 10 and increasing. What's going on? Everybody knows vomiting can hurt. It can cause acid reflux, burning in your chest, sore ribs, and sore abdominal muscles. The pain might linger, but it doesn't get worse after you stop vomiting. 
You check her lab results. Combo can cause a low sodium. Olivia's is normal, and so is her kidney function. Surprisingly, you note an elevated white blood cell count, which we typically associate with inflammation or infection. There's always a risk of infection, of course, after a burn, but this is way too soon for an infection to have developed. So what do you do? Give her some pain medicine, tell her she'll be fine in a few hours and send her home, or do some more testing. If you sent her home, Olivia didn't survive this podcast. Now she says her neck is swelling up, so you re-examine her. The frog face is completely gone. Her neck is mildly enlarged, but she doesn't have any pain. When you press on her neck, it's crunchy, like Rice Krispies crackling underneath her skin. The same crackling is happening in her upper chest and armpits. The medical term for this is crepitus. What is this? Did she get the wrong frog? We've discussed toad secretions before. See episode one. And different species of frogs and toads contain many different kinds of toxins. They can secrete hallucinogens, tetrodotoxin, the poison in pufferfish, and digoxin-like substances, among others. Some of the side effects related to combo use have been blamed on using the, quote, wrong frog, quote, an easy culprit that's difficult to prove or disprove. Olivia is not hallucinating. She isn't paralyzed and doesn't have a low heart rate. The wrong frog here is unlikely. Question number three. Combo has been associated with which of the following problems? A. Sudden death. B. Seizures. C. Hepatitis. D. An altered mental status. Or E. All of the above. The answer is E. All of the above. Combo has been associated with a number of different medical problems. I'm using the word associated here intentionally. It's difficult to know if these cases are just that, associated with combo use, or actually caused by the combo itself. Several cases of low sodium are reported, and it does appear that combo causes SIADH, or the syndrome of inappropriate antidiuretic hormone release. This results in a low sodium, which in turn causes seizures and an altered mental status. Drinking excessive amounts of water exacerbates this problem, so typically users are advised to drink water but not more than one liter. Two cases of dangerously low sodium have been reported, and both patients drank six liters of water while taking combo. Kidney failure can result from the copious nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea causing dehydration. Hepatitis has been reported. In Australia, there are several cases of sudden death after combo use. These received a lot of media coverage, and there and in Brazil, its use has been outlawed. Limited information on the Australian cases is available, and it's unclear to me if Combo caused the deaths directly or more likely contributed to the deaths. A businessman in Brazil was actually convicted of murder using Combo. Olivia's chest pain isn't improving, so you order a chest x-ray. Her lungs are normal, but there is an abnormality on the film. There's air outside of her lungs where it doesn't belong. It's in her mediastinum, the center region of the chest between the lungs, where the heart, aorta, esophagus, and other important structures lie. There's also air in the subcutaneous tissues of her chest. Air outside the lungs isn't dangerous in and of itself, but it also isn't normal. So you order a CT for more information. The chest CT demonstrates a tear in her esophagus. This is called Borhoff's syndrome. It's a rare disease that can occur after copious vomiting. It's also called effort rupture of the esophagus. You can see it in patients with bulimia, after heavy lifting, and childbirth. It's dangerous because it means material from the esophagus, like food or stomach acid, is getting into the mediastinum. The mediastinum is supposed to be sterile to protect the vital structures inside. Food is definitely not sterile. Infection here is called mediastinitis, and it's both life-threatening and very difficult to treat. Luckily, Olivia has a small, contained rupture. The cardiothoracic surgeon thinks conservative management with IV antibiotics rather than an operation will be enough to treat her. This is a fictional case, as are all our cases to protect the innocent, but it is based on real poisonings. The bottom line is that complications from combo don't appear to be common, but if they occur, can be potentially life-threatening. Given that there's currently no proven benefit, there isn't much reason to take it. The risk-benefit analysis just isn't favorable. Question number four, and the last in today's podcast, what poison is contained in the poison dart frog? A. Batrachotoxin, B. Curare, C. Aconitine, 
or D, physostigmine. Post your answers on our Twitter feed at PickPoison1, and I'll post the answer in the next 24 hours. Remember, never try anything on this podcast at home or anywhere else. Finally, thanks for your attention. I hope you enjoyed listening as much as I enjoyed making the podcast. It helps if you subscribe, leave reviews, and or tell your friends. All the episodes are available on our website at pickpoison.com, Apple, Spotify, or any other location where podcasts are available. Our Facebook and Instagram pages are both at pickpoison1, and additional sources like references and photos are available on the website along with transcripts. While I'm a real doctor, this podcast is fictional, meant for entertainment and educational purposes, not medical advice. If you have a medical problem, please see your primary care practitioner. Thank you, and until next time, take care and stay safe. Thank you.